Hello, welcome to the third episode of Implementing Exceptions with Ruby. My name is Hernan Wilkinson of Ten Pines, and remember that we are implementing a new exception model with the Ruby language. On the second episode we wrote our second test where we verify that if a block, if inside a block we throw an exception, the handler related to that block is going to be evaluated. After we wrote this test we had some to-dos that I wrote for you and to save some time here where uh, there are four to-dos that I detected. The first one is a design smell that is related to the issue that we are using a class instance variable to reference the exception handler in the PROC class. The problem with that is uh, if we have the handler in a class instance variable the system will only be able to have one uh, exception handler in the whole system because a class instance variable is almost the same as a global variable but inside a class. Second point is that we should have to evaluate the handler only if the exception that is thrown matches the exception type of the handler. Right now the method handle always evaluates the handler besides the exception type. The third to do is related to the second one because if we have to evaluate only the handler if the exception type matches what happens if there is no exception handler for an exception? So that's the third to do that I wrote and the fourth one is that we should stop the execution of the, uh, of the code after the message throw after the message throw. Um, that's something we saw in the second episode and if we modify the second the test number two and after the throw we return number three we will see that the test is going to fail that is because the throw is not stopping the execution after it is sent so we have to change our test test number two to be sure that that is happening we already did it but you could ask yourself well, why don't we write a new test to verify this option, this uh, behavior? And the thing is that right now the, uh, the test as we had it in the second episode is not written correctly. It has an error and we could get uh, false positive as results. So we have to write, we have to modify the test too to be sure that it's well written and that it's not going to produce false positives. So we're going to modify it in such a way that if the execution get to this point we will uh, send the message flank to make the test fail. Okay, so now our test is failing and we have to make it work. To make it work I would like to point a difference between lambdas and closures because what we need to do is here after writing after evaluating the uh, handle the handler sorry we have to return from the method called handling but how can we do this i mean we are evaluating the block that received the message called handling and that is inside that block we are throwing an exception that gets to this point where the method handle it's, it's evaluated and from here we have to return from the method called handling. That's something very difficult, it's like that we have to stop the execution of the method called handling from the method handle. So to do that we're gonna see a difference between lambdas and closures in the Ruby language and we're gonna do it creating dot two methods, the first one we're going to call it return from lambda that is going to assign to a variable called result the evaluation of a lambda that is going to say return 5 and then the method is going to return result plus 10 just to do something and then we're going to have another method called return from closure where we're going to create a closure that is sending the message PROC that creates a closure and that's the only difference between return from lambda and return from closure besides its name 
and after that we're going to evaluate those methods sending those messages and print the result I don't know what you are expecting to see but we can see that the difference uh, that there is a difference between return from lambda and return from closure in return, return from lambda we get the number 15 that is the result of summing 5 plus 10 instead in return from closure we, turn, we, we get the number 5 and that is like this return is returning from the method and that is exactly what a return does in a closure the difference between a lambda one of the differences between a lambda and a closure is how the returns binds the return in a lambda binds to itself that means that this return is going to stop is the evaluation of the lambda while the return of a closure returns from the method where the closure was created in this case the method return from closure so that's the difference be one of the differences sorry between a lambda and a closure in the ruby language and look at how the closure is working the closure is returning from a method when the return is evaluated and that's what ex exactly what we need to solve our test in in this episode we we want to have a closure here with a return that will allow us from to to return from this method in uh, you know evaluating it in another method like the method handle here if we could evaluate that closure here in the handle method then it, we would return from the call handling method so how can we do this well we are going to do exactly the same as we did with the handler we're going to reference this closure from a class instance variable from now uh, return closure and then we're going to use it from here in the handle return closure call and remember that we are getting a result as result of the evaluation of the exception handler so that's what we're going to send to the uh, return closure using the method call and then we have to change it here so because the closure is going to get an object when it's evaluated and that's the object that we want to return as a result of the exception handler now we have to implement this method def self uh, return closure that gets a, a return closure and we're gonna save it sorry in a, a class instance variable okay so let's see now if the test works and yes it is working let's debug a little bit because it's difficult to understand what is happening so let's put a breakpoint there and let's see what is going on okay so when the call handling me message is sent the method related to that message is saving the handler in a class instance variable and then is creating a closure that has a return that if the closure is evaluated is going to return to from the method call handling and is saving that closure also in a class instance variable of the class proc after that we are evaluating the receiver of the message call handling that's the one that throws the exception that creates a new exception of the class new exception and then send the message throw to it that sends the message handle to the class proc and here is where the handler is evaluated the handler says return the number 2 
and then with that object that is the object 2 we evaluate the return closure passing 2 as a parameter and when we evaluate the return closure we hit a return that is inside this method the call handling method and therefore is going to return from it with the an, with an object and an object is the object 2 so that's what is going to return from here and we see that result is equal to 2 and therefore the test passed so okay point number 4 is done let's save it here just to see after all the episodes what we had done and okay I think that's all for this episode we are not going to do more it's I think it's enough uh, so the conclusions are that from the language point of view uh, there is a difference between lambdas and closures uh, some languages don't make this difference some languages do for example on C sharp the uh, closures are uh, you know they behave uh, as lambdas of the Ruby language related to the return uh, expression uh, in small talk everything is a closure so different different languages have different implementations of these uh, objects uh, I recommend you to read the series of papers the papers called lambda the ultimate something like lambda the ultimate declarative lambda the ultimate imperative lambda the ultimate go to that are a series of papers written by Sussman and Guy Steele in the 70s when they were creating this scheme language they they show you how uh, a language can be written only with closures and if you have closures then you don't need any special uh, syntax to handle um, control flow structures in the language from the design point of view we use a closure to create what is called a continuation a continuation is a point in the execution where you want to return some some time and that's the uh, what we are doing with the return closure is a continuation where we want to go back when we execute the exception handler and from the TDD point of view um, remember that the test have to be written correctly they don't have to produce false positive because if they start doing or, or generating uh, bad results you will not uh, believe in the test anymore and that's not a good sign if you don't if you stop believing in your test it's like stop believing in your compiler or in the database or even in your operating system it's something that should not happen if you stop believing in your test you stop writing tests you stop executing the test and that's the worst thing that could happen when you are doing TDD so okay that's all uh, for this episode I hope you liked it if it is if it was difficult for you to understand what we did with that closure please look at the video again or download the code and try to debug it and modify it until you understand it completely I hope to see you then in this fourth episode